Choices. I haven't stepped outside in days. Every step is a choice we make. The path I take, the way I walk, a way I walk. I hope the next step will be better than my last. In fiction, days like this don't usually exist. Does fiction imitate life or life fiction? As the writer of my story, it's hard to see the line in the sand of my choices and chances. In life, choices are right or wrong. In fiction, choices are better or worse. I'd rather live in fiction with no days like this. It's liberating to have no wrong to choose and no right to follow. Welcome to the Memento Mori Lab podcast. I'm Myra, your host and aspiring creative friend. This episode's topic has been on my mind for a while when it comes to the creative process and existing as a human being. Life is nothing but choices. Our days are a sequence of choices at every moment until we fall asleep at night only to wake up the next day and continue with all the choosing this or that. Obviously, everyone deals with a different set of choices. Some have a pool of amazing options to choose from. Others have very limited, crappy ones. But for the most part, we all have choices to make, and whatever we decide impacts our future. Even though sometimes we don't even realize we are making these choices, right? Many of us seem to be living life on autopilot. It feels like we don't have much say in anything anymore. Life just goes on and we go with it. If we look back, we can see that the choices we made in the past led us to where we are today. I also feel like the brain is always trying to save energy somehow and work as little as possible. And it's much easier to do the same thing over and over than to break out of a cycle or a routine and do something different. AKA make a different choice, potentially a better choice. This whole topic came about because I started taking a class on TV script writing. It's a career I would love to have. I will just throw that out there and if I make it one day it will be fun to refer back to this episode and cry happy tears. If it doesn't work out, well, what can we do? Anyway, we are writing spec scripts in class, which are basically a script for a new episode of an existing show. For example, I'm writing one for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I just, I love that show. As we started working on these spec scripts, writing out ideas and outlines, I noticed that I had all these potential ideas of different ways the story could go. And suddenly all I could see in front of me was this ocean full of ideas and choices. And it was as terrifying as like a tank full of sharks. This brings me back to episode 23 when we talked about analysis paralysis. It's when we have so many options, we end up completely frozen, unable to decide at all. But I kept going with my script, making choices and thinking that eventually I would just decide and I would have fewer choices to make as it progressed. I was wrong. The more in-depth I go, the more decisions I have to make. Cut this out or keep it or change it or add that other thing, or cut that other thing, what about that other idea, oh, I cut that part, so now I have to redo this part, mm, should I scratch the whole thing and start outlining again with a different story? Is this good enough? Do I cut it to Endless choices. Endless. Then I heard the following. By the way, Maybe I've said this here before, and if I did, bear with me, my memory is terrible. I heard it from my teacher, I think. 
<laughs> like I said, my memory is terrible. Anyway, I heard this. There are no right or wrong choices. There are better and worse choices. The difference is subtle, but I think it's extremely helpful. We are always chasing the quote-unquote right choice and desperately clinging to some options as if they are the right choices. But what if there's no such thing? If there's no right or wrong, we don't need to waste so much time trying to get it right. Or waste all of our time avoiding making any decision at all in fear of getting it wrong. There are better and worse choices. For example, we are always choosing words to communicate and convey our points of view. When we are upset, we usually make worse choices. The point is, writing is all about choices. Any creative endeavor is all about choices. Life is nothing but choices at all times. So we need to somehow learn how to be comfortable making choices. And I have a feeling that's hard for most people. I mean, I, I do know some very decisive people, but I also know and am one of those very indecisive ones that struggle to make a choice every day. Of course, we can follow carved out paths in life. Those will require us to make fewer choices, you know, instead of that expression like reinventing the wheel. Like if you hike in the woods or something, you follow a trail, you won't have to make the same amount of decisions as a person who decides to not take the path and go their own way. You know what I mean? Or like building IKEA furniture. We have the instructions at hand and we just need to follow the steps without making judgment calls. Except when sometimes the instructions aren't very clear and you accidentally build something backwards and you have to disassemble and do it all over again. Uh, anyway, not the point. You get the analogy. Life is the one thing that we keep building with no idea what the final product is quote-unquote supposed to look like and with no instructions whatsoever. Just like any creative path, there is no step-by-step, -step, there is no outline, there is no map. But we try to structure everything as much as possible to feel like there is a step-by-step. -step. In life, we define the times for things like breakfast, lunch and dinner. We define the years a person needs to study and the path is outlined. You go to school, high school, college, get a job, get married, build a career, have a family, etc. It's all just a desperate attempt to structure the mess that is being human, at least in my mind. In the creative process, teachers try their best to give it a structure or a step-by-step -step to their crafts. But the truth is, most of it just exists to give us some false sense of security. They create these maps, cheat sheets and whatnot, which might all work to some degree, but do they really? I mean, other people following none of it can potentially reach the same results or even better ones. Here's an example. You set out to write a movie. You can find tons of structures, maps, beat sheets online that could help you with, with the process. You can even find things like on page 3, something like this should happen. On page 15, the hero should discover his purpose or whatever. That's all great, but none of it helps you put words to paper. They might help you after you've written something, but it won't get you started. At least that's how I feel about them. The fact is that we need to sit down and write our ideas, make the choices on our own. We need to find our own process. Creativity isn't something we just fit into a mold. Perhaps one type of structure works for some and not for others. That's what I'm struggling with the most when it comes to writing my spec script or my creative path in general. All these structures and maps don't tell us how to make better choices. They don't tell us how to decide or define whether this choice is good or not. You know what I mean? They can't. 
What makes a movie great are the choices the writer made along that map. And I guess this ability to discern between choices is something we need to develop on our own. Maybe the best way to learn is to make choices. It's terrifying, I know. But maybe it's like a muscle, you know, like the more we use it, the more choices we make, the more we get used to making them and the better we get at discerning what's good. I don't know, I'm hoping that's how it works. If you give 10 people the same premise and tell them to write a script following the same structure, we will end up with 10 completely different scripts. If you give 10 people the same furniture, like a bookshelf, and give them the instructions, we will end up with at least 8 similar bookshelves. That's something we need to accept in the creative process and in life. It's daunting, but it's also magical. We might make similar choices in life and end up in completely different places. We might follow the same creative process and end up with amazingly different art pieces. It's kind of beautiful, right? I think that's an important realization if you want to lead a more creative life, but you struggle with finding the process or pushing past the fear of failure and making the choices you need to make. Also, considering the many different choices available is a great way to stop living on autopilot and start living a more creative life. The options are there if you want to change your life in any way or make one better choice a day, you know? Of course, everything plays a role in making a change. Our habits, the way we see ourselves, our surroundings and the list goes on. I think we talked about in another episode that if you want to make better choices in life or if you want to create new habits, uh, we can design our environment accordingly. Here's what I'll say on that. If you always reach for the cookie jar on autopilot, what happens when you stop filling up the cookie jar? The simple idea of better choices rather than right or wrong choices is liberating. Think about it, it's not even the best or the worst choice either. It's just better choices. Words matter and the way we think about things can have a massive impact in our lives. Many creatives tend to get paralyzed by fear and not take action at all towards their creative goals. I know I do that a lot and I'm sure many of you do the same. Maybe considering better choices might be the unlock for you to start creating more. This concept has helped me push through some writing crises these past few weeks, so I hope it helps you too. Remember that there's no map for the creative process, so there are no right or wrong turns. You and I might take the same path and end up in entirely different places. Or you and I might take completely different paths and end up next to one another. So who knows? The point here is, if there isn't a right path, why should we worry so much about the first step? Or about every other step after that? If something works for you, it works for you. We can't just follow other people's maps hoping to end up somewhere, you know? And with that in mind, and before we end this episode, let's go to another poem. Last choice. Surrounded by choices, decisions to make every day. Each time the clock ticks, there's another choice to be made. I often choose without thought. No decision is still a choice. I check boxes, I accept terms, I select options, I click submit. Would my choices change at the sound of my final clock? What would I choose without tomorrow? With no right or wrong in sight, could I still make the same choices? The world would not taste the same. Perhaps I would realize my choices weren't always truly mine. Maybe we just need to keep moving forward. 
and discover the path along the way in search of better choices. What is the better choice you can make today? Hit me up on Instagram at memento.mori.lab and let's chat. I hope you found this episode helpful and if you did, let me know, I would love to hear it. If you have a couple of minutes to spare, consider leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or somewhere else that they allow you to review podcasts, I don't know. Let me know what you'd like to hear more about or just boost my ego or I don't know if you want to criticize me that's fine I'll take it <laughs> anyway I hope you have a great week and thanks for hanging around till the end see ya